experienced hiker in Yellowstone National Park killed by a grizzly bear. Tonight, the hunt for the beast on the loose in one of America's most popular destinations. Tinderbox, searing heat and bone dry brush fueling new wildfires. Homes destroyed, more than 100 families evacuated and the erratic wind and lightning on the way. Toxic River, a major waterway now free flowing yellow sludge stretching more than 100 miles and heading towards the Grand Canyon. And remembering Frank Gifford on the Giants in the broadcast booth tonight, a look back at the Hall of Famer's life. From ABC News World Headquarters, this is ABC World News Tonight. And good evening. Thanks for joining us on this Sunday. I'm Tom Yamas, and we begin tonight with Donald Trump trying to change the conversation after making remarks that risked alienating a huge group of voters, women. Trump calling into the Sunday talk shows, still refusing to apologize after personal attacks on debate moderator Megyn Kelly that many saw as attacks on all women. Now going forward after firing a political advisor who says he fired Trump. Since I last caught up with him in, in Cleveland, now a new plan of policy proposals and campaign events coming up. Trump hoping to stay at top of the polls. ABC's Devin Dwyer has more. Under fire and firing back tonight, Donald Trump standing by insults he hurled at Fox debate moderator Megyn Kelly. So no apologies to Megyn Kelly? No, not at all. I said, look, she asked me a very nasty question. I have nothing against Megyn Kelly, but she asked me a very, very nasty question. On ABC's This Week, Trump defending his comments that set off a firestorm. Blood coming out of her, wherever. Insisting to George, he did not mean to imply anything inappropriate. I was referring to nose, ears, they're very common statements, and only a deviant would think of what people said. The Republican frontrunner with a recent history of controversial comments about people. immigrants and American POWs now arguing he has no problem with women. I've always had a great relationship to the women. Women are tremendous. The woman at the center of it all? You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs. Tonight, for the first time, her defending her treatment of Trump. You know, he felt attacked. It wasn't an attack. It was a fair question. But I get it. And, and he's in the arena, and so am I. Megyn Kelly moving on as Trump's GOP rivals, sensing an opening in the race, try to do the same. All the air in the balloon is going to Donald Trump right now. I don't really pay any attention to these other things. But can Trump sustain his surge? For the second time in a week, his campaign facing a major shakeup. The billionaire businessman says he fired longtime top political advisor Roger Stone. Stone claiming he fired Trump. And despite the turmoil, Trump says he's having a great time with the campaign and is full speed ahead. One of his advisors telling me tonight Trump plans to put out specific policy proposals on immigration and jobs in the next few days. Tom? And we'll be following every step of the way. Okay, Devin, thank you. Yellowstone National Park is crowded with tourists this time of year, but they share the park with wildlife as well. Tonight, one hiker very familiar with the park's trail is dead, and investigators say it looks like a grizzly bear is to blame. Here's ABC's Lindsay Janice. Tonight, visitors at Yellowstone National Park on high alert after authorities say a man was apparently attacked and killed by a grizzly bear. They say the 63-year-old whose name isn't being released was an experienced hiker and worked at a medical center inside the park. His body discovered Friday afternoon near a popular trail. Investigators saying his forearms had defensive wounds and they found partial tracks believed to be from an adult female bear and at least one cub. We hope to capture a bear sometime in the very near future. Just two months ago at Yellowstone, oh my God, there's a bear on my car! Oh my gosh! Pouncing on one family's car and scaring the children inside. And three months ago, this black bear and her cubs appearing on one of the park's bridges, lined with sightseers. Mama bear charging one family as they scramble to their car. No one was injured in either incident, but on average, one person is injured in a grizzly attack every year in Yellowstone's backcountry, with black bear attacks in the park more rare, one every six years. We have to respect what we have here. In order to have a safe visit, there is a personal responsibility for people as well. Tonight, wildlife experts are reminding people if you're in bear country, try to hike in groups of three or more, stick to designated trails, and always carry a can of bear spray like this one. Tom? Lindsay Janice for us. Lindsay, thank you. 
Severe storms are ramping up in the central plains tonight, threatening cities and suburbs. A monster storm whipped up near Tucson, Arizona this weekend, that lightning potentially igniting the dry desert brush. While relentless flooding causes uh, central flooding in Florida. Here's ABC's Ryan Owens. Tampa can't seem to get a break. This weekend, the Florida city hit yet again. This neighborhood submerged after 10 inches of rain in just eight days. Pumps brought in to drain the water, homeowners facing major repairs. If the county and the state uh, can't get together and come up with a permanent solution, I don't know how I can put more money back into this house. In South Dakota, this family racing to keep golf ball sized hail out of their home. That same system lighting up skies over Nebraska. Tornado! Tornadoes reported there and in Kansas. Out west, more than 40 large fires burning, including this fast moving blaze in Arizona. The fire is continuing to grow. This thing is burning and it's roaring. Hundreds forced from their homes. More than 10,000 firefighters battling blazes in California, where one firefighter lost his life this weekend. Ryan Owens, ABC News, San Diego. We head overseas now to another big weather story tonight. That deadly tropical storm, once a typhoon that slammed into China. Take a look at this. At least 20 people are dead or missing. You can see here homes destroyed, streets flooded. The damage is staggering. The pounding rain triggering mudslides. More than a million homes are without power right now. The same storm definitely changing. It's killed at least 10 people in Taiwan. Back here in the States on this day, one year ago, a white police officer killed an unarmed teenager in Ferguson, Missouri. The death of Michael Brown triggering a summer of unrest and a national conversation about the police use of force. This week in another incident under the microscope, this time in Texas, ABC's Kendis Gibson reports. Surveillance cameras at this Dallas area car dealership capturing some of the final minutes of 19 year old Christian Taylor's life. Taylor, a college football player, exits his dark Jeep and hops over this barricade into the parking lot. Police receiving a call early Friday morning of a possible burglary in progress. They're by the suspects trying to get into the vehicle through the windshield. Watch as Taylor jumps repeatedly on the windshield of this gray Mustang, peels back the cracked glass before walking off. He returns to his car, drives it through the barricade and around the parking lot and through the glass showroom. Officers respond. They made verbal contact with Mr. Taylor through the glass wall, instructing him to lie on the ground. Mr. Taylor was not compliant. The surveillance cameras do not show what police call a confrontation between Taylor, who was unarmed, and two officers, 49-year-old Brad Miller and his field training officer. We got shots fired. Miller firing four rounds, striking Taylor multiple times. The decision to use deadly force is one of the most difficult and scrutinized actions a police officer will ever make. The FBI now investigating. <laughs> Taylor's death, adding fuel to protests in Ferguson, marking the anniversary of Michael Brown's death. I miss you, boy. Former officer Darren Wilson cleared of wrongdoing, the town erupting in violence, Ferguson further igniting the Black Lives Matter movement. A Washington Post analysis shows 24 unarmed black men shot and killed by police this year alone, a statistic not lost on the youngest. I think I'm going to get killed. That's how you feel as an eight-year-old. Some tense hours ahead here in Ferguson with protesters expected to return to the police headquarters later on tonight. Tom? Kendis Gibson in Ferguson, Missouri for us. Kendis, thank you. To California now and a brutal murder renewing the firestorm over the country's immigration laws. A suspect is behind bars tonight, but many, including the police chief, say he should have never been on the streets in the first place. ABC's Aditi Roy explains. Police say 29-year-old Victor Aureliano Martinez Ramirez was one of two men who broke into 64-year-old Marilyn Ferris's home, sexually assaulted her, attacking her with a hammer. She later died. Authorities say Ramirez is an illegal immigrant who had been arrested six times in the last 15 months and was out on probation facing misdemeanor drug charges. Right, so the the Santa Maria top, police chief is now blaming fixed, weak drug laws that allowed Ramirez to be level. released. When the federal government and the state governments fail to do their job, 
It falls on the shoulders of local government. So we're seeing the brunt of this. The case follows the high profile shooting death of Kate Steinle on the San Francisco waterfront. The man arrested in that case was an illegal immigrant who had a federal immigration hold, a request to be held for pickup or deportation. But he was protected by so-called sanctuary laws, which prohibit local authorities from turning him over to immigration officials. But federal officials say there was no such hold on Ramirez because he was charged with a misdemeanor. Tonight, U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement tells ABC News it is seeking notification in advance of his release or transfer from local custody. Tonight, Ramirez remains behind bars and is scheduled to appear in court later this week. Tom? Aditi Roy for us. Aditi, thank you. We want to turn your attention now to this image. The potentially toxic runoff has already stretched 100 miles, shutting down summer vacation spots, angering residents. The yellow sludge from a Colorado gold mine is still creeping south, contaminating rivers. The EPA is on the scene because, get this, it was one of their crews that caused the mess in the first place. Here's ABC's Mary Bruce. Tonight, new fears that this popular summer destination may soon look like this. Thick yellow muck rushing down the Animas River towards the crystal waters of Lake Powell in Utah. And concerns it could reach as far as the Grand Canyon. One million gallons of toxic wastewater spewing from an abandoned mine in southwest Colorado. It's scary. I mean, it's dangerous. And the Environmental Protection Agency tasked with protecting these waters is to blame. A cleanup crew was digging near the old mine when it accidentally ripped this hole releasing the mustard-colored sludge. We misjudged, and, and this is something that, that I'm owning up to. The contaminated wastewater snaking its way over 100 miles through Colorado into New Mexico, creeping toward Utah. The EPA under fire after waiting almost 24 hours to notify state and local officials of the spill. New Mexico Governor Susana Martinez blasting the agency, saying, I am disturbed by the lack of information provided by the EPA. Environmental officials say the water contains heavy metals, including lead and arsenic, the acidity in some areas as strong as black coffee. Municipal drinking water is safe, but the EPA has warned people to stay out of the river. Mary Bruce, ABC News, New York. Also tonight, we are remembering Frank Gifford. He earned nearly every honor there was to win in football and then became a fixture in our living rooms as a sportscaster on Monday Night Football. ABC's Chris Connolly with our look back. From the 1950s onward, Frank Gifford was charismatic on the field and off. Hello again, everyone. Frank Gifford with Al Michaels and Dan Deardorff. Happy Gifford achieved his greatest ABC moments of celebrity with ABC's tonight. Monday Night Football, where he was on the broadcast Quite team frankly, for 26 for years. His chemistry with boothmates Don Meredith and Howard Cosell made Monday Night Football a pop culture phenomenon. It was football that made Gifford a star, beginning in college at USC, where he was an All-American, and then in 12 seasons with the New York Giants, where his good looks and cool under pressure made him an icon of the era. I was out of the ordinary because I was from California, and, I, and my nose wasn't broken. I had all my teeth. I paid an enormous price for it, too, on the football field. Uh, I did within the Giants itself in the early days until I proved that I could, I could hit back as well as I could be hit. Sends Frank Gifford flying around in, but With the Giants, Gifford won a championship in 1956. He'd retire from football in 1964 and become a broadcaster. Everyone Through it all, exuding unmistakable back. star quality. As another former New York Giant turned broadcaster, Michael Strahan, remembers. If you're a football fan or a giant fan and you remember him for all the great things he did on the field and you remember him from things you may have seen him do on TV then that's great too. I just hope people remember that um, we lost a very very good man and a good person. I called her after that I said <laughs> while doing some guest long. hosting for Good Morning America <laughs> like he would meet the vivacious <laughs> Kathy Lee Johnson. <laughs> they <laughs> wed in 1986. Like she survives him along with five children and five grandchildren. Gifford died at his home this morning at the age of 84, long to be remembered as an icon of broadcasting and a hero on the field. Chris Connolly, ABC News, Los Angeles. And our thoughts and prayers with the Gifford family tonight. Still ahead, distracted behind the wheel, another bus driver caught in the act, talking on his cell phone, how passengers, even children, are taking action when they see those drivers tempting fate. 
and later going the distance, why she's braving the cold, shark-infested waters, and why she has some bragging rights tonight. Those stories coming up. ABC World News Tonight, brought to you by Prevagen. Can a protein originally found in a jellyfish improve your memory? Our scientists say yes. Researchers have discovered a protein that actually supports healthier brain function. It's the breakthrough in a supplement called Prevagen. As we age, we lose proteins that support our brain. Prevagen supplements these proteins and has been clinically shown to improve memory. It's safe and effective. For support of healthier brain function, a sharper mind, and clearer thinking, try Prevagen for yourself today. I want my yoga pants to smell like I sweat money. I want to smell the way champagne tastes. I love champagne. Infuse your laundry with up to 12 weeks of luxurious, long-lasting scents. Unstoppable's in-wash scent booster. I want my foyer to smell more like a foyer. I want his bedroom to smell like he's away at boarding school. Surround yourself with up to six hours of luxurious, long-lasting scents. Introducing new Unstoppable's air refresher. To you, they're more than just a pet, so protect them with Canine Advantage 2.